I'm in the Beverly Hilton with Bo Hopkins. And Bo, thanks very much for taking time to talk with us. Thank you for having me. Flying me over to Australia for four days, free, <laughs> put up in a nice hotel. And <laughs> Bo, how did you become interested in acting? Was it something that you set your heart on as a child, or was it something that sort of developed? It was something that sort of developed because I was sort of cut up in school, and I don't know, my dad died when I was nine years old, and so my mother and grandmother had to raise me. And I run away from home and learn to lie very early, so acting was lying. So I did it for, I, I'm still doing it. So I had to go on service when I was 16, and once I got out of service, my little theater director in my hometown, Donald McKellar, got me in a, well, I did a play, and then I did a lead in three, four, two, three plays after that, and then he made sure I got a scholarship to Summer Stock, and that's actually where it started. But I've always been a cut up. I've always liked to mimic people, so that's what actors do anyway. <laughs> That's basically Okay. The summer stock back in the east? It was in Kentucky, Pioneer Playhouse. Yeah. After you did that, what, did you come over to California where all actors come, or what happened then, Bo? No, I went to New York. I'd met a guy that had written a play called The Leaky Roof Circuit, and he invited me to New York. And the girl that I was in the summer stock with, I stayed with because I didn't come from South Carolina. It's a cultural shop. So I went to New York first, and I didn't like it because I don't like any place that a dog don't have a part. I like to visit New York, but I, I didn't want to live there, so I came out to California. Was that to further your career or just to get out of New York? No, that was to try acting out here. If they want to be in the acting, everybody eventually comes to California. Now, you would have been one of thousands, millions. How do you get in the system? How do you get work? Well, I did some plays, and then I got an agent who had, had seen me in a play, and then I got my card by doing on the Andy Griffith show, and later Ronnie Howard and I did. His mother, God bless her, died, and and she reminded me of my mother. So basically, after I got my card, then you can work. And I started doing mod squads, gun smokes, bonanzas, and guest starring because that's where you learn. And I actually learned a lot by doing. Still don't know what I'm doing, but at least I, you know, I, I learned. And it was hard work, but scary. I guess that's what drove me. Yeah. Scared, but scared not to. <laughs> Were you earning enough to earn a living, Paul? Yeah, yeah. I quit parking cars after the Wild Bunch was my first picture with Peck and Paul. And so after that, I quit parking cars. <laughs> <laughs> Your mother, what did she think of you being an actor? I was an actor when I was a kid, so everybody's an actor. Some of us get paid for it or make it believable. She was very happy. I took her to see. They had the premiere of The Wild Bunch in my hometown, and I took her, and then I took her to see Bridget Remagen, which was my second picture, and so I was glad to see that. Everybody told her I was going to end up probably in jail and pen or whatever. She got a kick out of them telling her. I always knew Billy would make it. Was, Billy was my real name then, but Bo later. But, and I was glad lucky that people helped me, you know, like Holden, Bill Holden, Ernest Borgine, Robert Ryan, I mean, God, the first picture, that's, oh man, I was like a kid in a candy store, yeah. just being on the set and watching them. Well, I mean, you hit the gold mine because The Wild Bunch is one of the greatest American films ever made, so what, did you just go through the normal casting process and were lucky enough to get the gig? I think they tested about 14 people, and I think Peck and Paul was tired of testing people, so it's, but actually, Roy Sickner told Sam about about me and so I got the part shot it in the middle of Mexico but again you know, when I did the movie I had no idea it was just like when I did American Graffiti and Midnight Express I had no idea well, Midnight Express maybe I thought but American Graffiti had no idea and it's a cult movie now <laughs> I mean, you're in another classic there, Bo. I've been very lucky to have been in some good movies. Mm -hmm. I've done a lot of bad ones, but then again, yeah. I tell people, well, I'm an actor. I have to make a living. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not a critic. <laughs> now, do you have any wild Sam Peckinpah stories while you're shooting The Wild Bunch? Well, yeah. He asked me one day to... I was on the set every day because I wanted to watch and learn and I was standing around he said hey kid come here I want you to fire this shotgun when I point at you to scare these horses I want them running in front of the camera and I didn't know it but he set full loads in the air and he said okay lean down and so I had the gun shotgun like that and I went bam went right on my butt <laughs> and of course everybody laughed but that's okay because I was a rookie he used to tease me a lot but he was very good to me and God knows I miss him I miss him an awful lot did you keep in touch with him because you did three pictures with him did you? yeah I always kept in touch with him yeah well, were you 
one of his gang. I guess you could say that, yeah. Yeah, yeah LQ, me, Strother Martin, and yeah, I think I was one of the wild bunch. <laughs> <laughs> but I want to get onto a film that I really, really like, another Western, Monty Walsh. Can you tell us a little bit about Monty Walsh? Yeah, I played the kid in that, and that was about my, I guess, my sixth, seventh picture. And I wanted to do it because I always wanted to work with Lee Marvin, and we shot it in Tucson, and it was great working with Lee and Jack, but especially Lee, we became good friends, and his wife Pam talked to her three or four weeks ago. Sure miss him, too. He left too soon. A film's called Only Way Home, directed by G.D. Spradlin. You starred in it with Beth Brickle, and I remember Beth Brickle from Gentle Ben. Yes, that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah well, it was a little independent picture that, in fact, I just finished Monty Walsh, and I flew to Oklahoma City, where G.D. lived, and he produced it and directed it, and his daughter was in it, so it was fun to do, yeah. Another Sam Peckinpah classic was The Getaway with Steve McQueen and Ali McGraw. Well, that was fun because I got work with Steve and Allie and... Did you get along with Steve? Yes. Once we both got over the, oh, he knew I wasn't a threat and, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, I didn't tell him how much I loved him as an actor. <laughs> but, yeah, we became good friends and Allie, the sweetest person. And, of course, my other friend who died later, Al Terry, had a great time on that picture. Ben Johnson. Ben and I did about four pictures together. Just had a great time. It was yeah. a good cast. And later when I did Killer Elite, the next one I yeah. did for Sam, was a lot more fun. I had bigger part and I got to do some, you know, shoot myself instead of being shot. Of course I did <laughs> later. It was great to work with Steve. He had the gift. Interviewed last time I was here, Richard Serafian with Man Who Loved Cat Dancing with Burt Reynolds. It was a fairly unusual film as well. And where was that shot, Bert? We shot that in Gila Bend, Arizona, and that movie was cursed from day one yeah. because my mother died three oh. weeks into the picture. Oh. Sarah Miles was business manager. A guy killed himself, overdosed. Bert's back went out on him. Well, he had a hernia and then Dick Sorakian's back went out on him. Oh, man, that was, oh, jeez, that was a tough, tough picture, <laughs> mentally. It eventually got made, and I like it. Well, Sarah's just, uh, what an actress, and it was one of Burt's best things, I think. Yeah, the movie came out okay, but behind-the-scenes stuff was yeah, tough, yeah. tough, very tough. Also, I want to get on to a film directed by Kirk Douglas, called Posse. Now, do you remember how Kirk was as a director? Uh, he was good, yeah. good director, especially to me. He made the part bigger. Great for an actor. <laughs> yeah, great for me and I of course being an actor Kirk and Burt Lancaster were shooting a picture there so I got you know in Tucson at the same time so it was fun to go out to dinner with them and Kirk Douglas and Burt Lancaster and Glenn Ford should have an AFI film award for the work they've done it was great working with Kirk I sent him a letter you know this past year he's always been a fighter he can be cantankerous but by God he delivers and he's a great actor and also uh, and as an actor I love working with a director that's you know was an actor you mentioned Ben Night Express. It was a fantastic film, a shocking film. You were saying before that you knew it was going to be good. Well, the script was good. I knew that if Alan Parker directed it, the way it was written, it wasn't a fun movie to work on because <laughs> it was so depressing. You know, we shot it in Malta. I enjoyed Malta, but it was a tough picture to yeah. shoot because we're shooting in a prison. Thing. Was it a real prison, but No, it was made into a prison, the set designers, and actually Oliver Stone, you know, wrote it. We didn't meet until I did U-turn. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so we had a long time in between. But it was great working with Brad, great kid, and, of course, Randy Quaid. The thing on that is that we had to, you know, it was on Malta for God knows how long. I came over late. It was already filming. You worked for George Lucas again on Radio Land Murders. How was that? Well, I worked for him twice again. We did more American Graffiti. And then Candy Clark and I, he wanted us to come down to a little cameo. And he directed the Senate. It was the first time he directed since Graffiti. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah. it was fun for him. Yeah, we had a good time. Yeah. We mentioned U-Turn before. How's Oliver Stone? We know he's a great writer. How is he as a director? He's as intense as he's writing? He's like Peck and Paul. Yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. A crazy too. In his own way, yeah, yeah. Well, God, you love to work with him because he was a legend. All the great work he's done. So I had a good time, but he's got a sense of humor like Peck and Paul. He likes right. to tease you, you know, which I like. you got to get his sense of humor. Once you've got that down, you're okay. Yeah. Let's get on to From Dusk to Dawn 2, yeah, because you're working with a new breed of hot shots there that's like one of Quentin Tarantino's friends, Scott Spiegel. Was Quentin around as well? No, no, he was in New York doing a play. Yeah, it was fun. I'd been to Johannesburg, but I'd never been to Cape Town, and I enjoyed it. Of course, it's just too far. I don't really like going that far away from home, especially when you got a five-year-old, and I don't really like being that far away from home anyway.
anyway, but I had a good time. It was fun to work with Robert Patrick, and Quentin had told me about the script the year before that. It was a fun thing. Why did they shoot in South Africa, Bo? You know? Money. Money, yeah. A lot okay. cheaper. Oh, yeah. A-class crew. I want to ask you about this movie in Porterville. Don't Let Go, is that the name? That's the title now, okay. you know. Yeah, I did one just before that with Dwight Yoakam and Billy Bob Thornton and Bridget Fonda called South of Heaven, West of Hell. Great title. Yeah, good title. So Dwight Yoakam's given up the singing, has he? No, 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 no. He won't ever give that up, yeah. but Dwight's been studying acting for 15 years, so it's not like, and he directs his own videos, so it's not like it's his first directing job, even though it was, but he wrote every character in there for somebody in mind. Matt Clark, Luke Askew, and I have done four or five pictures together, so it was fun to see my friends again. Well, that's about all we have time for. I just want to ask you, you've got a little script there, so is that your next project, Bo? I don't know yet. I'll find out today. Okay. <laughs> well, good luck with it. All right, then. Bo Hopkins, thank you very much for taking time to talk with us. Thank you and give my love to all my friends in Australia, the Aussies. See, in South Carolina would say good night, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much.